I think the main theme is really from evidence to action, towards an evidence-based and data-informed policy action and pen countries within Africa and outside Africa. And I just want to highlight that the president of ICE, Dr. David Ameau, thanked all the participants, the organizations, and the sponsors who made this conference possible. Then you went ahead and highlighted that the conference aims to promote evidence from rigorous impact evaluations and research, and to encourage increased uptake and utilization of research and innovation in evaluation to influence policy and to drive change at the national, regional, and, and global levels. And we had opening remarks and keynote. And I just want to emphasize that as I go through this recap, it doesn't capture all that was said, but I think most of the information will be captured when we get the final report. What I could hear is that agriculture is taking a center stage in the African continent. But at times, these are my own words, that I, it appears that it's a center state, but it has a broken backbone that we really need to reflect upon. Over the last decade, African governments have brought agriculture back to the top of the development agenda. There's increasing in, in uh, investment at the national levels. But this was highlighted by the different speakers that we listened to. We had this emanating from Dr. Lesimai's speech that was delivered by Dr. Kale. We had this emphasized by the board chair, Dr. Namanga Gobi. And also we had this from David Ameao. Now, as a follow-up, Dr. Ngogi said that despite the unprecedented decade of impressive growth across the continent, much more remains to be done to sustain these gains and truly drive the agricultural transformation needed for Africans' development to ensure a better life for all of its people, as laid out in the Malabo Declaration, and the sustainable development. Indeed, I think in my past experience, we've witnessed increased yields. But as we talk today, food security remains a major challenge. I think yesterday's speakers highlighted what is being witnessed in Nairobi or in Kenya with respect to, to maize. And in Kenya, food security is equated with maize, which is a staple crop. And we know that more than 30% of calories and protein comes from maize. That is in the Kenyan context. Normally in Kenya, when there's no maize, there's hunger. But I think we need to think, should Kenyans be thinking about no maize, no hunger? I went to the groceries yesterday but the, the, the supermarkets were filled up with rice and potatoes and others. I think it is high time that we really think of changing a mindset that do we just focus on maize or could we eat other, other products. And I just want also to add that Dr. Ngogi underscored that we need a homegrown capacity to be able to handle rolling programs. And he said, if you do, not one. If you know, if you do not know where you are going, how will you know that you are there? And I think when you have projects, you have to have a baseline. Where am I today? What are the set goals and objectives? What do I want to achieve? How do I get there? So that's where evaluation comes in with baseline evaluation, mid-time, mid-term evaluation of projects, and then the evaluation: Did we get? Did we achieve the goals that we were set to do? 
And then we were lucky to have the director of crop systems, Dr. Lusike Wasilwa, who raised a number of questions. The questions about information. How do we compartmentalize information so that it reaches the farmers? In whatever we do in agriculture, the farmer occupies the center stage. There's good data generated, but how do we get this to reach the end users? When, we, when are we going to provide all information that we require to advance evidence? Then there were the issue of youth in agriculture and gender. How do we attract the youths to be interested in agriculture? But I think if you are starting a project or running a project, how do you integrate gender dimensions into the project that you're running? Agriculture is complex, and you have the system from production to consumerism, and those gender issues run across the value chain. There are issues of research industry linkages. Technologies, innovations are being generated by researchers. But there's need to link this to industry. She asked the question, who is the private sector? I was excited to learn that actually the private sector, the biggest one, is actually the farmer. The question is that how do we increase the voice of the farmer in the value chain from production to consumerism? How do we engage farmers? And I think when we had the breakouts, agricultural extension and information systems, these are the areas that we should explore. What are the multiple channels that we can use to engage farmers? What kind of scientists need to get out of their comfort zone. How can scientists be innovative? If you are at the university, how can you engage the students' work and link these students to the industry? And I want to highlight what Dr. Namanga said yesterday. The agricultural, uh, the fertilizer recommendation in Cameroon that was used in 1968 is still being used today. How can the universities really produce research that is tailored to a particular crop, a particular agricultural zones that really is suitable recommendation for the various crops that we grow and also to, for the various agricultural uh, ecozones. I think the business should be unusual for the scientists. Get out of your box, be innovative, Think of innovative ideas that can generate new information that can inform a continent. Then she said, let us be real. Let us be practical. Let us put that evidence that we generate into action. And I just want to emphasize, because I think I've spent time on capacity building, and it is very passionate to me. There's need for capacity building at various levels. There was emphasis of capacity building of the farmers. And I think the emphasis yesterday was hands-on experience of the farmers. Farmers require practical trainings. We need to establish innovation centers where farmers can learn. The question is, how do we? put the practical aspects of what we do. Information packaging. How do we distill information and package it in a language that farmers can understand? And I think the information capacity building for researchers, we learn new things every day, technology changes, the cutting edge research. And we need to change with, go with that change. Policy makers, we need to engage them in, in whatever we do. And I think we are talking about evaluation. 
I believe that everybody seated here should know something about evaluation. I've been in an organization where program officers are recruited. They are supposed to run a program. The programs have to be evaluated, but do they have the evaluation skills? So we need to look at evaluation as a professional and also advanced style. And I think evaluation are the other disciplines. I just want to focus on the opening remarks by the guest speaker that was delivered by Dr. K. Then he began by thanking ICE for being the first African based think tank that combines research and evaluation to inform policy. Again, emphasize the challenges that we are facing. But I think I just want to say that the convening will provide a platform for industry stakeholders to discuss strategies for enhancing the dissemination of, of research findings and ensuring that the processes achieve the desired impact. Again here, capacity building, we need the capacity to, to, to advance this. Towards evaluation synthesis of agriculture transformation, how do we make a difference? I think the emphasis here is high quality evidence. If it is low quality, of course, poor results. Avoid the temptation to use lies in statistics. Establish ways to determine priorities of research. Let the process be participatory. So he said, we want to make a difference. That is why evidence to action matter. So if you want to improve African agriculture, then you have to join the revolution. And I think for the breakouts, we had eight breakouts. And this was tailored to the most critical topics of concern and interest to the people here. There were evidence synthesis, technology adoption, developing markets through public uh, private partnership, and extension. And I just want to say it is time for Africa to take time to systematically review, translate, contextualize, and disseminate research findings to put African countries on track towards achieving sustainable agricultural transformation. I think low technology adoption was highlighted in the breakout. This is not new. How can we do the business different to really accelerate this? And again, I think agricultural uh, information and extension, I think I've mentioned this, we really need to think through how this can be accelerated. There was issue of index-based livestock. I think with the challenges, climate change, drought or flood, we need to think about insurance, both crop insurance and livestock insurance. And there are certain evidences that we saw from the IPLI project. In summary, I think there's a consensus about the need to share or scale up evidence to spark growth in African agriculture that will lead to sustainable development. There's need to identify what works, for whom, where, how, and at what cost. There's need to promote evidence-based research and use results to drive the development agenda. More importantly, working in <coughs> partnership remains imperative. If you want to go far, go together. Thank you.